I'm Kate Kelly with America Comes Alive, where you'll find great stories simply told. Baseball started as a relatively harmless game anyone could play. If there was danger to a player, it was likely the catcher who stood near home plate and might be hit by a thrown bat or an errant ball. Because of this, the game evolved. Catchers stood a few feet back from the plate and cut pitches on the bounce. But in the 1860s and 70s, new styles of pitching were being used. Players were developing the curve ball. This put, put a strong forward spin on the ball, causing the ball to drop suddenly and veer to the side. With these pitches, catchers needed to be closer to home plate. The risks increased, and the catchers were sometimes knocked out cold. As collegiate and professional teams added the new pitch, the players responded. When a catcher was knocked down or out, the expectation was that he would soon stand again and resume play. Crowds cheered for this response. That said, teams did lose some of their catchers to bad head injuries. The first fellow to focus on a solution was Fred Thayer, a Harvard student and captain of the Harvard Nine. Thayer was excited because a new, particularly good player was joining the team, Philadelphian James Ting. Ting was known as a great batter and an excellent catcher. Thayer wanted to keep him safe. Around campus, Thayer noticed that face masks were being carried by members of the fencing team. He asked to borrow one to take to show a tinsmith. Maybe a catcher's mask could be crafted. It needed to offer the player good visibility of the field, but be made of something strong enough to deflect a ball. The test mask developed by Thayer and the tinsmith was first used by Ting in a game in Lynn, Massachusetts in 1877. There was some grousing from the opposing team that the mask gave the Harvard Nine an unfair advantage, but overall, the use of the mask gained approval. The Harvard Crimson newspaper soon carried an editorial. The new mask proved a complete success since it entirely protects the face and head and adds greatly to the confidence of the catcher who need no longer feel he is in danger of lifelong injury. Fred Thayer applied for a patent on the mask in January of 1878. Less than a month later, it was approved. Professional teams soon picked up on the invention. There was some talk about whether it was manly to wear a mask, but teams finally decided that having a catcher who was not down and out for the count was worth it. James Ting and those who followed were able to move closer to the plate. Soon catchers began to crouch, enabling them to form a target with their hands in the strike zone. Over time, it became clear that other protective measures were needed. Today, the catcher wears shin guards with knee padding, a chest protector, and a glove, as well as a very well-designed mask that protects the head, face and neck of the catcher. All of these greatly reduce injuries for young people as well as for pro athletes. I'm Kate Kelly with America Comes Alive. Look around and see what inspires you.